In the world of science, sometimes you have to put a little extra money on the table in order to attract the attention of some of the world's greatest minds. The X Prize facilitated the private space race in the 1990s. The Nobel Prize comes with a cool sum of nearly a million dollars. And Charles Lindbergh made his historic flight from New York to Paris in order to win the Ortig Prize, $25,000 in 1919, which translates to roughly $400,000 today. So when the French Academy of Sciences put a 2,500 franc prize for whomever could solve a question of beer in the 1800s, French scientists were excited to bring beer into their labs. But the great Louis Pasteur decided to tackle this problem not for the money, but for revenge. Hey, this is Ryan with Beer by the Numbers, and by 1870, Louis Pasteur had already revolutionized several industries thanks to his scientific breakthroughs. Advancing germ theory, milk production, vaccinations for several diseases, and strangely enough, doing work with silkworms that allowed for faster silk production. Louis Pasteur certainly didn't need any more money or accolades by studying beer. But world events would set the greatest mind in biology at the time on a path of research and revenge. If you're excited to dive into this strange chapter of beer history, leave a like down below and let's get started. In 1870, beer was probably one of the last things on the mind of Louis Pasteur. In July, France declared war on the Northern German Federation after years of provocation and some incendiary telegrams. While the French did manage to score a couple of early victories, it quickly became clear that the great French military minds of two generations prior were long gone, and by September, the Germans were approaching Paris. After besieging the city for four months, the French were finally forced to surrender in January of 1871, handing the French a humiliating defeat and setting up a rivalry that would last through the end of the Second World War. The Franco-Prussian War had a big effect on many French and German citizens, and Louis Pasteur was angered and saddened by the events. First, his son enlisted to fight in the war, and although he wasn't a casualty, there's no doubt that parental concern weighed heavily on Pasteur. Second, Pasteur's work had brought a lot of prestige to France, making them the envy of the world's scientific community, especially in biology. But all this national pride was quickly erased by the French defeat. And while this certainly didn't undo Pasteur's work, the loss of this pride was something that Pasteur himself did not forget. But perhaps most importantly was that Louis Pasteur was in negotiations with the French government to construct a new lab when the war broke out. Obviously, events delayed this project for years, and the potential for even more scientific breakthroughs was lost with it. So with his national pride hurt and new lab delayed, it's natural that Mr. Pasteur grew resentful of the German state in the years following the war. But Pasteur was not a fighter nor a politician, so he elected to take out his frustration in the best way he knew how, with science. Nearly a century before, a French chemist named Antoine Lavoisier proved that fermentation caused sugar to convert to CO2 in alcohol in beer and wine. But with this step forward in brewing science, a great debate was ignited. In one camp were those scientists who believed that fermentation was nothing more than a slow chemical reaction that happened in the casks of wine and ale. In the other camp were those who thought it was some sort of biological process, but they didn't know exactly what caused it. It could have been any number of germs, bacteria, or other theorized microorganisms. The debate became so intense that the French Academy of Sciences put a bounty on proving what caused fermentation. 2,500 francs, or about $50,000 today. This question went unsolved for 80-some years, and while the cash prize wasn't exactly enough to get Pasteur to solve this important biology question, beating the Germans at beer science certainly sounded like a sweet, sweet form of national revenge. Pasteur immediately got to work on a series of experiments using filtered grape juice. 
first, he set aside 10 bottles of grape juice as a control. In the second group, he had 10 bottles to which he added a little bit of water he used to wash the skin of the grapes. In group 3, he added the same grape skin water, but boiled it first. And in his final group, he added the extra sweet juice drawn from the center of the grape. Naturally, only the second group of bottles fermented, and when he looked at the samples from each under a microscope, he clearly saw that yeast cells in group number two and proved once and for all that yeast were the party turning grapes into wine or barley into beer. But he didn't stop there. Now that he knew yeast were the microorganisms responsible for fermentation, he wanted to know what other microorganisms did to a batch of good beer. In 1876, he published the book Studies in Beer, which outlined his findings. Bacteria like lactobacillus could turn a beer sour. Some microorganisms could kill the yeast, leading to an under-fermented batch. But perhaps the most important thing in the book were the techniques he laid out that allowed brewers to understand how to experiment and determine what was happening in their beers, and why one batch was good and another one would spoil. The book was so influential for the beer industry at the time that the scholar who worked on the English translation wrote the following. The more I studied the work, the more I was convinced of its immense value to the brewer as affording him an intelligent knowledge of the processes and materials for which he deals. I determined accordingly to publish the work if I could secure the consent of its distinguished author. The debt which we English brewers owe Mr. Pasteur can hardly be overestimated. And remember, that's an Englishman writing about a Frenchman there. And to leave no doubt as to his motivations for studying beer, Pasteur wrote the following first paragraph of Studies in Beer. Our misfortunes inspired me with the idea of these researches. I undertook them immediately after the War of 1870 and have since continued them without interruption, with the determination of perfecting them, and thereby benefiting a branch of industry wherein we are undoubtedly surpassed by Germany. So there you have it, beer nerds. Brewers and beer scientists owe a huge debt to the revenge sought by the brilliant Louis Pasteur. What do you think of this very emotional chapter in the history of beer? Let me know down in the comments section below. And once again, this has been Ryan with Beer by the Numbers, and I'll see you for another round in my next video.